again. Yeah, he uh, gets better with age, like a fine wine, Jay Otto. Still a weapon in this Australian lineup, and Matt Floros now will bowl the final over to this pair. Oh, it's full length, outside off, and Nick Ward, he's batted well. Uh, he's looked pretty comfortable to all four bowlers so far. Yeah, I've been impressed with Nick Ward. I thought he's, he's really been good today. Uh, nice and composed. A leg side there from Matt Floros. That certainly helps the New Zealand cause as they edge their way towards 30 runs as a, for the total as this pair comes to an end. Chance for the keeper. Doesn't get to the Australian hands and a diving Nick Ward is home. Four balls remain in the partnership. A chance there, it falls safe. Again, Nick Ward, very composed. Yes, very good shot from Nick. Getting in nicely behind the ball. Good shape from Matt. But Nick just getting on top of it. Good cricket. Oh, great delivery there. Better to the left-hander. Ryder unable to get it away. Two to come. Well, a chance there. It's a diving Jay Otto, is it? Cannot get the ball back in at the stumps, but it is another dot, and this pair will finish on third ball. So Jesse Ryder and a bit of pressure now on the third ball. Where's Matt Flores going to place this? Full and wide. Good option. Full and straight. Moving away. And Ryder hits it for two and moves the pair to 17 again. Not a bad fight back. But they're chasing 94, sitting on 25. Only eight overs remain. So it's going to need something very, very special. 70 runs required from two pairs. Two pairs of 35 plus. Fortunately... For New Zealand, Crook, who uh, played a very good game against your team, Sean, yes. in the uh, prelim final. He's out here to bat. I think he's going to be, uh, well, if, if they've got one batsman out here that can still get them close to that total and get them a good 30-plus pair here, I think it'll be Crook, just based on what I saw from last night's game. Yeah, it's fair comment. It's fair comment here. Yeah, a really good game. My concern here is with both these batting pairs that have finished now, the Australians put immense pressure on the first couple of overs and you found the New Zealand's playing catch-up so I, w I almost suspect that there we go they get start with Travis Baker coming in really hard put them on the back foot again and they won't mind if the if the last two overs are playing catch-up from New Zealand absolutely it's it's an approach I am a massive fan of in indoor cricket and that is you never defend you always attack absolutely and with 94 runs on the board they just keep attacking the Australians and as you say it's coming in the form of Travis Baker Hunter Cliff on strike, he gets it away. Let's wait for the call, I'm not sure which net that caught first. I've taken my glasses off, Sean, and <laughs> it will be one. Certainly don't want to be coming in and facing Travis Baker for the first over. Almost feel like you're under the cost already. Yeah, absolutely. So. But then again, you did say Crook had a wonderful game last night, so you'll be up for this challenge. Yeah, I think so. And uh, you can come into the game with some confidence, having played that big game. Um, you need that confidence to contend with players of, of the, uh, the calibre of Baker. That's leg side. Well, the extras are certainly going to help New Zealand's cause, but I get the sense that Australia probably really only need to take one or two more wickets and have put this beyond doubt. Chance for Fitzgerald, and there's one of them. He is an absolute champion in that position. I talked about Matt Flores before making that leg side position his own. Rob Fitzgerald owns the three line in that position, and what an amazing effort that is. Take a look here. 
shot, a diving effort, and throws the stumps down, and if you don't mind, in the air when he threw that ball. Take a bow. And if you're a young indoor cricketer, just have a look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Mm. It finds the net, it'll be two. They get back to zero for the pair and 25 for the total with two balls remaining. Just going back to that piece of fielding from Rob, it wasn't the worst shot I've seen before, but the execution and the positional play of Rob Fitzgerald is absolutely brilliant. And that's, uh, that's proving to be the difference between the two sides. We've talked almost ad infinitum about all of the opportunities the Kiwis missed. The Australians, on the other hand, they're turning one percenters into wickets. Absolutely. That's a misfield and it creates a chance at the keeper's end. Tunnicliffe is home. To finish the over, one run from it. Another great over from Baker and ably assisted by Rob Fitzgerald with that run out. What I love about this Australian team, Jay Otto obviously very annoyed with himself there, missing an opportunity. But within seconds, the Australian boys are around him. Forget about it, mate. Let's move on. Let's get on to the next ball. Good, positive attitude. Should uh, probably mention uh, that this is the final World Cup for the Australian coach, Ross Gregory. Yeah, he has uh, announced his retirement. This will be the last time he's in charge of an Australian side. What an impact he's had on indoor cricket in Australia. Oh, wonderful man. Will this will be his fourth World Cup, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, I think it might be more than that. Uh, and a direct hit! Oh, the Aussies have gone up. That was very, very tight. Vinesh Bennett off his own bowling. Unbelievable. Another very good piece of fielding. And also, all credit to Crook there, putting his head down and accelerating right through the line. Wonderful shot. New Zealand. Ball, I meant to say there, <laughs> That's, ladies and gentlemen, wonderful ball. New Zealand really need to make sure that they turn this, this over into a positive over. And down up dot. Very good line that, Cameron. Very good, very tight. side definitely helps the New Zealand Good. cause but they're going to need a few more of those yeah you see Bennett just wiping his hand a little bit there a bit of moisture really hot in the center close yeah very good change up here for Vinesh he's really got the batsman guessing this is, in fact, uh, Ross Gregory's seventh World Cup in charge of the Australian side. I just checked my notes. What a remarkable career as Bennett continues. Straight to the field or a direct hit. He went back, turned to the top, and the Australians, Luke Ryan, they are all over these Kiwis. Just a clinical performance we are seeing from them in the field. It's a big time game, and they've turned it up. They've turned it up to the gear, and the New Zealand are feeling the pinch now. Really under pressure. Wonderful piece of fielding. Lack of communication from New Zealand resulting in a minus five. And look, Sean, I see this time and time again from Australia at tournaments like these. They get pushed throughout the week, including by New Zealand, who nearly beat them in the round robin stages. And they turn up for the big games and they are ruthless. Incredible. I but agree with you. Absolutely ruthless is a wonderful, wonderful way to put it because. They leave no room for error. If, if I have to analyze this and say they probably missed one chance. That's it. Here's Floros. Tim Floros, that is. Another chance. And the Kiwis sense now this might be a little beyond them. They'll need some sort of special effort here. This pair started looking good and Crook had a good, good game last night, but uh, they're certainly under the cost now.
And once again, they're on third ball. You know, we talked a few times about what New Zealand need to do and what they need to score, but look at the bowling attack they've had to contend with. Unbelievable from the Australians. Just look at the energy that's coming off them. Well, it's a loose shot. Gets away with it. Has a bit of a grin to himself. It's, uh, down up two in the book, though. Yeah, Tancliffe, not, obviously not going where he wanted to go, but uh, he'll take it. Full and straight, played with, played well by Crook. His runs for New Zealand. Just to give an indication, sorry, give an indication of how good a team this Australian team is. Crook is a good, solid batsman. To see a pair like this on three after, after so, uh, after eleven overs, it's a tough one to accept. And again, a good delivery. Just incredible bowling performance we're seeing here from the Australians. How about the batting, batting performance to put 94 runs on the board? Unbelievable. One to come now from Tim Floros. And a great shot there from Tunnicliffe. Another lo lovely stroke there. Solid into the ground. Well, Australians are the, are the defending champions, and you can see why. Well, I keep saying it's it's going to happen one day. Someone's going to beat Australia at a World Cup final. Um, and I know that every Australian team that comes away, comes away feeling that pressure. They don't want to be the first team to lose. But, well, I just look at the eight players on the court here and, and I look over on the Australian bench and I see the quality of the players sitting on that bench. They could literally have picked any combination of eight out of their 12. Uh, and the depth in the Australian side, and I'll use the word again, the ruthlessness in them. World cricket has to take it up another notch. In order for them to beat, the other countries are really going to have to lift their game. And, and when I say that, it's discipline, good piece of play there, good piece of fielding again. Um, it all boils down to uh, the standards and, and the levels, because this is a tournament where the, the likes of India and UAA and Sri Lanka are becoming contenders now, so the standards are increasing. And that's, that's definitely pleasing to see from an international perspective is the, the increasing standard of indoor cricket, the increasing exposure as I talk to you through Dubai TV and the live stream on Facebook. I think it was only, yeah, in 2014 we were, we were live on Sky Sports. In fact, we weren't live on Sky Sports. We filmed the game in New Zealand and it was retransmitted later. So... In just three years, we were able to bring you the World Cup final live, and Matt Flores makes no mistake from that chance as Tunnicliffe tries to hit out. And back to 29 other Kiwis. It's all green and gold at the moment, Sean. All green and gold, and unfortunately, uh, it's going to be an uphill battle for New Zealand from here. I just, I just can't see it getting any easier, and uh, the pressure just being piled on by the Aussies. Two to come. Tucked around behind square. They go for the flick. A little bit of a collision between the non-striker and Teske and Tim Floros. All is well. And one to come now in this batting partnership. The confined space and collisions do occur. But the boys tend to get up half half and move on. There's the edge. Finish the over, just six runs from that batting pair. Australia are large and in charge and on their way to another World Cup title. And Victor Davies and Scott Davies now make their way out onto the court. Well, 64 required. I think that's pretty well unheard of in a six ball over competition. Yeah, I've been around a while now and uh, never seen that at this level. So uh, New Zealand go out and Got a good positive 30 runs and restore some pride, but uh, sadly it's uh, almost a foregone conclusion. Yeah, and look, restoring some pride I think is an important point as we look at a few highlights here thanks to the team at Dubai TV. Uh, I mentioned this during the women's game earlier today. South Africa, well, probably two overs into their run chase were out of the game. 
what was important for them was not only to restore some pride for the Proteas, but also to learn from that World Cup final so that the next time they are there, they're better prepared against the side, the juggernaut that is Australia. The same is true here of the New Zealanders. There's I talked before about the role of honour they've got there. There's a lot of numbers that are high in the, in the hundreds. There's a lot of new players in this team. And we'll expect to see them at the next World Cup, and this experience will make them all the better prepared for it. Oh, certainly. Most certainly. Ryan, a ball, his second over. It's up. A diving Vinesh Bennett can't get to that. You see that Victor Davies isn't going to die wondering. Luke Ryan bowled a brute of a first over, and he's been sent into the backcourt for four, for the first ball of his second. Welcome to international cricket. Yeah. Well, what a comeback. What a comeback. Yeah, this is the thing about this Australian team. They don't get fluttered. I mean, he's been hit for a far there. He's got a dot ball. It's a fantastic ball. Let's see how he responds to ball three. Chance. And a great pick up and throw from Travis Baker. But uh, the New Zealanders are hip to it. And Victor Davies back into his crease. It'll be third ball now. Luke Ryan delivering a ball where the fielders are brought into play. And that's so important in indoor cricket. Driven and it'll be out. Straight back to Vanesh Bennett. And another wicket falls. Australia, the ruthlessness continues and Luke Ryan hits back from that back net shot. And that's three wickets for him in his first World Cup final. Brilliant. The Kiwis certainly laid down the gauntlet here. The intention is not to play up on the side nets, but uh, being very aggressive and trying to play through the V-line, hitting the back net. And that time costing them. Chance now. Chance. The throw is just wide from Baker. How quickly does he get in in that front court and pick up the ball for the turn and throw? That'll be a no ball short and at the head of Victor Davies and certainly called no ball by Andrew Hall Villiers. So four runs to finish. They get five runs from the over, but great figures for Luke Ryan. Three for minus three in a World Cup final. Good figures for Luke Ryan and really, that was a really well played shot there from Victor Davies. Above his head, hard into the ground, rotating and uh, yeah, they're fighting back. Jay Otto will bowl his second over with three overs remaining in the World Cup final. Has been a very, very good day for Australia. Four World Cup finals played here. The two opens division for the men and women and then in the 21 and under age group for the boys and girls. And Australia is going to take home all of the chocolates. Clean sweep from the Australians. Well done. All credit to you certainly done your homework and come well prepared and that's what expected at this sort of level Otto continuing Australians despite having both hands firmly on the World Cup they're not letting up they're not going through the motions here the net from Luke Ryan, just great fielding. Yeah, absolutely. Australians won't take their foot off the pedal here. They won't be happy with the New Zealand on 38. They want to get them down. Driven. Otto gets a foot to it and keeps it to one. More power hitting from Victor Davies. Maybe we should have seen him come in a little bit earlier, Sean, especially after the first pair, and maybe even if he didn't bat second, he should have batted third. Yeah, they could have possibly changed that run. The, the, this batting pair has been really aggressive, and what I'm liking here, yeah, they're on 39, the target is out of reach, but they're not giving up. They're giving it a go, they're restoring their pride, they're trying to build up an innings here, and they're going about it lastly. 
Well, what could have been if they'd batted earlier? And if they'd put on 30, different game. Be a leg side to close out the over. There's a good one eight runs from it for the Kiwis. A too little, too late as far as the World Cup is concerned. As you mentioned a few times there, Sean, it's all about restoring some pride for South Pacific's triple star now. 50 runs behind, two overs remaining. Yes, Cameron, and elaborate on what you said earlier. Let them learn from the sort of experience mm. so that when they come back from the next World Cup, you know, they know how to approach it. The Australians are are a clinical side, they finish and execute and all the countries for that matter, South Africa, everyone who's been part of this, we need to watch, take from this and come back and make sure that we're putting the Aussies under pressure. The Australian skipper will bowl the penultimate over of the tournament. Here at In Sports Club Dubai, our thanks again to our major partners at Like Fly, without which the World Cup would not have been possible. Here's Teske. Well, there's a chance at the top. The throw's a little high from Tim Flores. Maybe instinctively avoiding throwing that into the back of Victor Tafey's head. That's very kind of him. That'll be a dot. Certainly no lack of effort from the New Zealanders. Driven. Misfielded by Vanesh Bennett, but he still keeps it to one. Just scrambles along the ground there to keep it off the net. And well backed up as well by Rob Fitzgerald. Still plenty of aggression from these two. Yeah, so it was a good piece of fielding from Vanesh because that was struck hard. See Jay Otto filling in at the stumps for Lyle Teske, screaming for more chat. There's, what, 10 balls left in the game there. Some 49 runs in front, and he's still screaming for the standards that the Australians set themselves. And look at this field that's been set. Very deep Fitzgerald, deep Luke Ryan. <laughs> Victor Davies backs away and hits it down up two. Again, a sign the Australians are not going through the motions. No, definitely not. That's a, not taking the foot off the pedal. They want to finish well, they'll finish technically, and they want to go and hold the World Cup. Very unusual field in play here. And Teske beats Scott Davies. And two to come. Yeah, definitely unorthodox field, but uh, I can see the intention of New Zealand trying to be aggressive and play more in the V. Teske is the skipper, making adjustments in his field. And a two off the second last ball. It will be the final ball in the tournament for the Australian captain. He's been a member of, what, four World Cup sides? This is his fifth, I believe. I'm sorry if I've sold you short there, Lyle Teske, but maybe this will be his last. Driven straight to Fitzgerald and out. And what sort of field placement is that from the Australian captain? He almost went over and marked that spot for Rob Fitzgerald, and that's why... An easy run out again for the Aussies. Yeah, very good piece of captaincy from Lal Teske. Reading the game really well. And uh, Victor Davies having a go. Backing himself, but straight to the fielder. That one, that's exactly what makes a good captain. One that can read the game, assess it, and make the adjustment accordingly. So Matt Floros, the Australian vice-captain, will bowl the final over of the World Cup. Not a bad choice for the 16th over. Yeah, in particular if it had been closer. Indeed. Chance for the keeper, just falls out of reach of Jay Otto who stayed there after Teske's over. the World Cup draws to a conclusion the Australians well chance again it'll be a chance at the top but Davies is home the Australians have put on a little bit of an exhibition here Sean 
Yes, they have. An interesting point. I just saw the Australian coach just saying to the boys, come on, lift your standards. Don't drop them now. It's not over yet. Yeah, he's, uh, he demands high standards of his team, Ross Gregory. And, well, if my maths was correct, and this is his seventh World Cup, not only here, but seventh successful World, World Cup. World Cup, correct. Uh, that is uh, an unbelievable effort from him. And, and proofs in the pudding. That's that dem Demanding those high standards has been successful. Three balls remain now in the World Cup. Wonderful record. So as the Australians make their way towards the back here, faces filled with some smiles, and rightfully so. Job done. Well done. Just through ball past Teskey, and one ball to go now. One ball separates Australia and the world title. 22 for this batting pair. They really came back mouth and strong. And, and as you suggested, it might have been better to bring them up in a little bit earlier. And there's a wicket to finish. And Australia are your World Cup champions once again. What a comprehensive victory we have just seen. They have defeated New Zealand 94 to 48 an incredible performance from the Australians they came out and batted unbelievably losing just two wickets in the third pair and then to come out and put on a clinical display with the ball and in the field Sean Shaper New Zealand couldn't come up with an answer to such a brilliant performance from the Australians yes my heart goes out to them but unfortunately Australia were just absolutely clinical they were in a different league coming out here today and uh, New Zealand has fought, the Kiwis came back, they tried, they tried everything, they, they focused, they were hard, they ran hard, but the fielding from Australia, oh my word, they were just absolutely on song. Yeah, without question, as the Australians applaud their support here at InSports Club Dubai, there's but one thing that remains, Greg Donnelly makes his way over to the Australian side, well... No, they're going to shake hands first, and fair enough. And despite uh, being combatants against one another, lots of respect between not just these two sides, but all of the sides, as you would know, Sean, here in, at the World Cup. It's, uh, the World Cup's a celebration not only of the victors, but of the spirit in which uh, the competition is played. And uh, these two sides, as well as your own, typify that. Yes, indeed. An absolute tussle when it gets on there, but in the day, respectful human beings and uh, we need to congratulate them but absolute jubilation for the Australians and you know it's not just the fact that they've won it's how they've won they've really won clinically they've done their preparation and I think all Australians and supporters can be really happy with the performance and and, and a big congratulations to all all Australian teams who took all four of the trophies so uh, yeah very very good now the World Cup is just about to close the Australians go into the huddle before they receive the trophy so well no they're gonna go get it now <laughs> there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Greg Donnelly, the president of the World Indoor Cricket Federation, congratulates the Australian captain and hands over the 2017 Indoor Cricket World Cup. Your champions, Australia. And very happy Australians, as you can see there. An amazing performance from them at this World Cup. And ladies and gentlemen, we hope you have enjoyed our coverage. It's been fantastic to see. And of course, our congratulations to all of the Australian teams going through and winning all four divisions. Fantastic scenes live here from InSports Club Dubai. We might leave our coverage there, ladies and gentlemen. Sean Shaper, thank you very much for your company. It's been a pleasure calling the game with you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Wonderful. Congratulations. To